Now we're going to find a seat and once you're there, just pulling your bottom out from under you and sitting as tall as you can. And we're just going to roll the shoulders up and down our backs a few times. Just really feeling the front of the chest opening up, feeling the shoulders dropping down the back. And then start to engage through your abdomen. So as you inhale, I want you to feel the lungs and the chest expand. And then as you exhale, I want you to feel the tummy gently drawing in. Inhale into the chest, the lungs. Exhale, the lower belly draws in. So this is a more active breath because we want to start to engage and wake the body up. Stay with this, breathing into the ribs, the chest, the lungs, and breathing out, drawing the belly button in towards the spine. Let's take three more of these. Full deep breaths. And then after your last one, just returning to a normal breath, just settle into your seat and just gently let the eyes closed. And if you're holding on to your babies, just keeping your eyes closed, but feeling their movements in your hands or close to your body. And just start to breathe a sense of connection with your baby. Let your breath connect with theirs. Let your sense of calm and groundedness connect with theirs. <clears throat> and if it feels good, just taking gentle movements, rocking forward and back or side to side, just allowing this time to just really find that connection in whichever way works for you and your baby today. And if we can, we're gonna keep the eyes closed and we're still holding on to our little ones and we're just going to circle the body around. So just circling just in any way that feels nice for you. As you circle, feel the gentle movements through your spine, feel the hips releasing, feel your sit bones and your feet pressing into the mat. And then now we're gonna slowly change direction. So just circling the other way. And then slowly settling into center. And if you're holding on to your babies, giving them a tight little squeeze, a nice big hug. And then when you feel ready, carefully blink your eyes open. Namaste, welcome to your practice. All righty. So we're going to have our babies on our laps or on the floor. We're going to take our hands to our knees. As we inhale, taking a cat and cow spine. So inhaling, lifting the chest, lifting the chin, drawing the shoulders back, and then exhaling, rounding the back, feeling the shoulder blades really stretching apart. Good, and we'll stay with this a few breaths. Inhaling to open up the front body and just noticing what movements feel good for you. Exhale to round the back, so you're scooping the belly in. If you've got tight shoulders, just from carrying the babies, then that exhalation of stretching out the shoulder blades should feel really, really nice. Or if you've been rounded over the whole, the whole of yesterday, then opening up the front body should feel really nice. So just enjoying these two movements, really breathing into each stretch and creating space in your body as you breathe. Let's go for one more each way. So when you inhale, lifting up the chest, lifting the chin, drawing the shoulders back. And as you exhale, really drawing that tummy in strong and sending the shoulder blades forward. Good, we're gonna come back to center. Place your right hand on the floor. Inhale, lift your left arm up. Reach it up as high as you can, then draw the arm back to shine your chest up towards the ceiling. And as you do that, just make sure that the sit bones still stay connected to the ground. One more breath here, deep breath in. And then as you exhale, we're gonna reach that left arm over the top of the head. 
Very nice. And you should feel a really good stretch along the side body. And if you press that left hip down, you'll start to feel it in the outer hip, Anjana. Good, inhale, come back to center. Very nice. Let's do it on the other side. Inhale, lifting the right arm up, reach to the ceiling, then draw the arm back. Shining your chest to the ceiling as much as you can, feeling that right shoulder pulling back. And then inhale, we're gonna reach up to the ceiling again and exhale, take a stretch over towards the left. And just holding here for another three, another two. And one, carefully release. Good. From here, let's make our way onto all fours. So hands are under shoulders, knees are under hips. Just having a look where the hands are, really placing the hands directly under your shoulders, knees directly under your hips. <laughs> and just setting up our babies in a comfortable position. You can have them under you or just to the side or in front of you. And then taking a moment here, we're gonna push back into a little child's pose and then come back onto all fours, keeping the belly button drawing in. We're starting to engage through the core. Again, exhale, stretch back, stretching out the hips. And then inhale, come forward, pulling the lower abdomen in. Let's go for another three of these. Pushing back, stretching the arms, opening up the hips and then inhale, come forward. Very nice. Two more, reaching back and then coming forward. Last time reaching back, inhale, coming forward into a tabletop. The abdominals are engaged. Now holding it here, really pressing the floor away. We're gonna extend that right leg back. So shooting the right leg towards the back of your mat. Just the right leg. Good. Now, as we exhale, bring the knee towards the elbow. So you're opening the hip up to the side. The knee reaches towards the elbow or the tricep. Inhale, stretch the leg back again. We're going to go for another two of these. Exhale, bring the knee towards the side. Good. Last time, inhale, reach the leg back. And then exhale, pull the knee to the side, really engaging through the abdominals. And from here, watching quickly, that right foot just steps to the outside of the right hand. Good. Now we're gonna walk our hands about a foot forward to the top of the mat, and then shift your hips towards the ground. Good. So we've set up into a low lunge position. You can keep your hands on the mat. We can bring it up to the front thigh, lifting up into a crescent lunge. Good. And here you can keep your hands on the front thigh for balance. You can take your hands into prayer or even reach the arms up if it feels good. Staying here for another three deep breaths. And then as we exhale, we're gonna take the left hand down to the floor, lift the right arm up, holding a twist. Good. And just keep the hips pushing forward as much as you can. <laughs> Good. And from here, exhale, take the hand down. We're gonna take the knee back under the hips and again, setting up on all fours, resetting your position, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Good. This time we're going to extend the left leg out the back. So shooting the left leg back, drawing the abdominals in, staying really engaged. And then as we exhale, the left knee comes towards the elbow. Inhale, stretch the leg back. Exhale, knee towards the elbow. 
stretch the leg back. Last time, exhale, knee comes towards the elbow, squeeze, 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 then plant the foot outside the hand. Once you're steady, we're gonna take our hands forward on the mat, shift the hips a little closer and start to feel the hips opening up. So we're stretching out the front of the right thigh and we're going into a deep flexion on that left hip. And you can stay here, hands on the mat, or you can take your hands to your front leg, or if it feels good, reaching both arms overhead. Keep the shoulders relaxed as much as you can. Let the hips descend towards the mat and feel that left foot drawing towards the right thigh. Taking another three deep breaths here. And as you finish your three breaths, slowly bring the hands down. We're gonna take the right hand to the mat and the left arm lifts up. We come into a beautiful big twist. As you twist the spine, feel your right shoulder coming towards the left knee and feel that left arm reaching up and back. And as we exhale, taking the hand back down, bring your left knee back under the hips. Take the knees a little wider apart and sit back into your child's pose. Taking a moment here to bring the body as close to the mat as you can to really ground down. As you shift your hips as close to the heels as you can, feel the palms and the fingers sliding forward on the floor. Notice how that feels in the side body. And imagine you're trying to lengthen your little fingers so much that they're as long as your middle finger. And that really brings a deeper extension into the outer arm. One more breath here. And then as we exhale, slowly walking the hands under the shoulders, bring the knees a little closer together. We're gonna plant our palms flat on the floor, tuck the toes, and find our downward facing dog. Once you're in a downward dog, just walking the legs out, shifting the hips a little, shifting the shoulders. And when you feel ready, finding stillness in your downward facing dog. Stay as you are, take three deep breaths. Beautiful. Now from here, we're going to bend the knees and this time we're stepping our right foot in between both hands. Then plant your back knee on the uh, back, back heel, sorry, on the floor. And then lifting the torso up, finding your warrior two pose. <clears throat> so just checking that your feet are lined up, the heel lines with the middle of the instep, the toes are pointing to the top of the mat, start to feel both your hips externally rotating and then reaching the arms nice and long. Now stay as you are in that warrior two, but just have a quick look at the screen to see what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna inhale to straighten the front leg and give the body a nice big hug. So wrapping the elbows together as we inhale. Then as we exhale, we press back into warrior two. Okay, let's go together. Inhale, wrapping the arms around each other, elbows crossing as much as you can, almost like you're trying to hold on to your shoulder blades. And then exhale, sink into warrior two. Good, so we're bringing this dynamic movement to our practice today. Let's go for three more. Breathing in, lifting up, stretching the legs, stretching the shoulders. Exhale, sink a little deeper into your warrior two. 
Good. Two more. Breathing in, lifting the chest, lifting the body. Exhale, finding warrior two. So each time we come into that warrior two, the body starts to open a little more. Last time, breathe in, giving yourself a big hug, feeling the sense of self-love. And exhale, rooting down into warrior two. Stay for three. Breathe for two. Stay strong in the legs. Last breath. And then as we inhale, turn the front palm up, reach it back. The front leg stays bent. We're just curling our upper body back into a peaceful warrior. One more breath here. And then as we exhale, releasing the top hand, straightening your right leg, coming into triangle pose, Trikonasana. Good. Using props as you need, resting that bottom hand on your shin or on a block. Very nice. And then as we exhale, we're going to bend the right knee, take both hands to the mat, step back, downward facing dog. Good, finding your downward dog, lifting the sit bones high, extending the spine, extending the back of the legs. And one more breath. Now we're going to bend the knees and step the left foot to the top of the mat. Right heel plants down and when you're ready, coming into your warrior two. Good. Again, checking the alignment of your feet, feeling the hips opening up and gently tucking that tailbone under to keep the abdominals engaged and the back supported. As we inhale, we're going to straighten the front leg. Give yourself a big hug. And then as we exhale, finding warrior two, sink down into the pose. Good, we've got three more of these. Inhale, give yourself a hug. Exhale, shift your weight towards the feet, root down into your mat. Beautiful, two more times, breathing in, lengthening the body, squeezing the thighs up, and exhale, sink down, tailbone descends towards the mat. Last time, lifting up as high as you can, as much as you can. And exhale, holding the pose as deep as you can. And breathe for three. Breathe for two. One more breath. Turn your front palm to face the ceiling, then reach your arm up and over. As you extend into that top hand, Sink your hips a little closer to the ground. Stay focused, stay with your breath. And on your next exhalation, gently release your top arm, gently extend your front leg, tip your body into triangle trikonasana. Good. As you hold the pose, feel that right shoulder drawing back. Feel the left ribs rolling forward. The legs are still active, drawing the kneecaps up. Belly button is pulling in strong. One more breath. And then as you exhale, soften your front leg, palms down, step back, downward facing dog. So really drawing the shoulders back, keep your spine nice and long and also nice and broad. That's it, straightening the legs as much as you can, opening up the backs of the knees and feeling the back of your heels lengthening towards the mat. They don't have to touch, but just 
bring that sensation of drawing down to the legs. Good, one more breath. Then we're going to bend the knees, look to the hands, and this time the right foot comes forward in between the hands. Good, again, plant your back heel down. And as you feel ready, you're gonna lift up into a warrior one. So the right leg comes forward, left leg is back. We're in warrior one pose. Beautiful. Now reach your arms out like a T. And then keep extending them so far out till they come to the back. And you're going to interlace your fingers. Lift your chest, draw the shoulders back. Good. So interlace your fingers reach the arms or the knuckles away from your shoulders, lift the chest, and if it feels good, lift the chin. Staying here in this really open warrior one. Good, gently release the hands. Let's take the hands into prayer position, Anjali Mudra. Now, we're going to start to shift our weight to the front leg. So draw your belly button in nice and strong, really bracing through the abdominals, shifting your weight to the front leg, just rise onto the tippy toes. So the back foot is still on the floor. Turn the hip towards the ground, noticing a line or an imaginary line from your back heel all the way out through the crown of the head. Now, like a seesaw, we're just going to tip the chest forward and float to the back leg up, coming into our warrior three. Don't have to go too high, but what I want you to do is really push into that back heel as much as you can. So imagining your back leg as straight as a plank of wood and holding it here, balancing for three, for two, and one, gently place the foot down on the floor. Bring the foot flat, start to straighten into your front leg. And then from here, we're lengthening our chest forward. You can rest your hands onto your shin or onto blocks or onto the mat, coming into a pyramid pose. Good. Holding this stretch, really feeling the length in the front leg. And trying to bring as much length into your spine as you can. So as we come down, watching that we're not rounding our backs too much. Try to maintain that length as we lower down. Good. Breathe for three. For two. <laughs> Last breath. We're gonna soften the front knee. Let's flatten both hands down and step back, downward facing dog. Good, walk the feet out, then finding stillness in downward dog, resetting the hips, resetting the spine. Drawing the belly button in and gazing towards the knees or between the feet. Very nice. Let's move on to the left side. So we're gonna bend the knees and take the left foot forward. Plant your right heel down. And as you feel ready, inhale coming up to warrior one on the other side. Good, reach the shoulders down, reach the fingers up, sink into the legs. Stay strong in the legs as you draw your arms out to the side and keep reaching them out so much that they come all the way around the back and interlace the fingers, draw the shoulders back, lift the chest, lift the chin. Slowly release the hands. Bring your palms together to touch. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Now feel the center of your body drawing inwards, 
shift your weight to the front leg and just come to the very tips of your toes. Start to work that right hip down. So we're leveling both hips, squaring our hips and our chest to the mat. Yes, that's it, really nice. Now, as you feel ready, slowly floating your right leg up. And it, again, it doesn't have to go too high, but really extend into that right heel as much as you extend into the crown of your head. So feel your body lengthening in two directions. Straight in that back leg, as straight and as strong as you can. That will help you give stability to your pose. Good, that's it, Anjana. Flex the foot a little bit more. There we are. Hold it here. One more breath, feeling the back of the heel drawing up, squeezing through the bottom, maintaining that length through the spine. And as we exhale, gently floating the foot down, plant the foot flat on the floor. Lengthen out your front leg. Start to draw that left hip back. Right hip comes forward. Lengthen the chest as far as you can. And then when you can't go any further, you can rest your hands on your shins, on the blocks or on the floor. Taking three more deep breaths. And on your last exhalation, softening the front knee, palms down, step back, downward facing dog. As you inhale, we come forward into a high plank. Good, knees to the ground. And then taking a very slow touch to run them down all the way towards the mat. And draw the shoulders back, finding your cobra. Good, and we're just holding that cobra pose, taking three deep breaths, drawing the shoulders back, lengthening the collarbones. And then exhale, relax the upper body, find your child's pose and just take a moment in child's. Carefully walk the hands under the shoulders, slowly lifting the upper body. Good. Now we're gonna come back onto all fours. So the hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips. Really pulling the tummy button in nice and strong and working the shoulders away from the ears. So just watching that the shoulders are not collapsing up towards the neck. We're gonna tuck our toes and really bracing through the abdominals. We're lifting the knees just two inches off the floor. Okay, now from here, straighten the legs into a downward facing dog. And then as we exhale, we're gonna again, brace the abdominals, bring the knees just two inches above the floor. To this little hover. Good. And then press back, downward facing dog. Very nice. Let's go for two more. Breathing out, bringing the knees just above the floor. Spine stays in neutral. Really nice. And exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Last time, really strong through the center. 
hovering the knees just above the floor and tabletop. And exhale back into downward facing dog. And then looking towards the hands, we're going to bend the knees. And um, from here, setting up in pigeon pose. So we're gonna start on the right leg. We're just swinging the right leg forward. The knee and the ankle comes towards the wrist. Then lengthen your back leg away. Good. Just holding it here with the upper body lifted, shoulders relaxed, bringing that right foot as high up on the mat as you can and squaring the hips off. Now tuck the toes of your left foot, lift the knee up and just bring it as far back as you can before you release the foot. So we wanna really encourage length through that left leg. Then what we're gonna do here is take our blocks and place them in front of us and rest the forearms onto the blocks. So we're not going down all the way. Now stay as you are, but just take a quick look at the screen and what I'm gonna do next. So I'm gonna move, shift my blocks down to the lowest height and I'm gonna take my left elbow onto the blocks. Then the right arm is going to lift up. So we're twisting in towards that right leg. Okay, go when you're ready. So left elbow to the left forearm to the blocks, right arm lifts up. And if this feels okay, you can also explore having your left forearm all the way down onto the mat and twist that right arm up. And then as you exhale next, lowering the right hand, bringing your forehead down towards the mat, coming all the way down. Holding this pose nice and deep. And breathing into the body, breathing into the hips. Just letting everything melt towards the floor. One more deep breath. Then as we inhale, slowly taking hands under shoulders to lift the upper body up. Tuck the toes of your left leg and then find your downward facing dog. Onto the other side, we're going to bend the knees and this time bring that left leg forward, knee and ankle towards the wrist. Keep the chest lifted. Good, then tuck the toes of the right foot. Pick up the knee and place it as far back as you can before you lengthen the foot away. Let the hips settle in towards the mat. Then we're going to bring our blocks in front of us and lower down to the elbows. So just coming down halfway to begin with. And the reason why we're only going halfway is so we can try to maintain the alignment of the hips as we sit into this pigeon pose. Sometimes when we go straight towards the floor, we tend to lean towards the side. 
So just by going halfway, we're not going um, into the extreme depths of this, the pose. And that just helps us to maintain the alignment while the body takes its time to open up. Now from here, set your blocks up. And this time we're going to bring the right forearm onto the ground and then lift the left arm up into that twist, into this twisted pigeon. And again, if this feels okay, you can take your forearm, your right forearm down to the mat as you twist. And then as we exhale, lowering that left arm, and then now letting the whole body melt towards the mat. Staying here for another three deep breaths. And then as you feel ready to exit the pose, just slowly bringing hands under shoulders to lift the chest and this time we're just going to sit onto our left side and bring the right leg to the front. Good, so let the legs extend out in front of you, give them a little shake. Good. All right, now, Caleb, I can't see you. So I'm not sure if you've got baby with you. So I will just demonstrate two options for our Janusur Shasana today, okay? So we're going to um, just bring our right leg out to the side on a little angle. It doesn't have to go too wide. And the left leg we're going to fold in, okay? So our, uh, our hips are still opening up. Now, if you've got baby with you, you can either place the baby in front of you alongside uh, the right leg, or you can also have your baby on your left thigh, okay? Now, if we've got baby here, you can support the baby as you bring your chest down. If your baby is here, and if no baby, we're gonna lift our arms up, and then exhale, come into a fold. And as you're folding over, oh, we have, we have baby. Uh, as you're folding over, you can just use your hands to gently rub onto baby's tummy, going in a circular motion, clockwise motion to promote good digestion. And then for moms, we're stretching over, really lengthening out the lower back and that right leg and just make sure you keep your left leg on the ground. And in this position, we can also use our hands to just kind of stroke down the length of baby's legs, almost like you're trying to pull and stretch out their legs or just any, I mean, honestly, any physical contact is so good because as you're brushing and stroking your babies, you're really kind of stimulating all the nerve endings on the skin and especially on the feet, the hands. Really nice things to do as well is to stretch out their feet and their hands, their toes, their fingers. And this will really help to encourage their gross motor development, you know, opening up their toes so that they can um, learn to walk later on, opening up their palms and their fingers so they can then grab stuff and release a little bit better. We're just here for one more breath. And then inhale to slowly lift the chest. And then very carefully, you're gonna 
bring your baby to a safe spot. We're going to switch sides. So we're extending out the left leg, bringing the right leg in and just take your time to get yourself set up. <laughs> Good. And then as you feel ready, reaching the arms up for a big stretch before you come forward into the fold. That's it. And again, as you fold forward, breathing into the stretch and then connecting with your baby, either through little tickles or stretching out their arms, their legs. <laughs> and something really, really fun that you can also do is have your hands, both hands onto their hips. So our bodies are still folded forward, both hands onto the hips, and then just give them a little rock side to side. And again, by doing this, we're stimulating all the nerve endings on their back. That's it, good. Being on the floor is so, so good. As much for us as it is for them. And then just staying in the fold, the forward fold for another three deep breaths. And then when you're ready, inhaling to slowly come up. <laughs> Good. Now we're going to bring the soles of both feet together. And um, I'll give you a couple of options for what we can do with baby. So we can um, have babies on their tummies facing us, so facing you. Uh, yeah, so Anjana, bring your feet a little closer towards your body. That's it. And then the babies are outside the feet. So a little bit different to what we usually do here. Yeah, that's it. Good. And maybe you can encourage them to hold on to your ankles, your feet, but we're really trying to get them to tuck their elbows under their body. <laughs> now, if that doesn't work for today, you can also have them lying. So what you can do then is have your feet a little further away from you and then have them lying inside your diamond and their feet are um, just cradle their head with your hands. And so this way you can still fold forward, but you're supporting their head and their neck. So as you guys are getting into the pose, I'll talk through the different options again. We can have the feet away from the body, babies lying on the back and the hands are supporting the head head and we're folding forward in our Baddha Konasana. Another option is to bring the feet closer. The babies are going to be in front of us on their tummies and then we are also looking at the babies here. So this is another option. And then slowly walking the hands in towards the body, carefully lifting up. You can stay as you are. I'm just gonna show you our setup for the next pose. We're going to make our way onto our backs. Now, if baby is really young, you can have the baby on your chest. Otherwise, you can have them seated on your, on your hips, straddling your pelvis, one leg out on the other side. And you can either hold onto the baby's hips or the um, ribs or the hands if they've got better balance now. And then we're going to slowly come up into a bridge lift. So take your time to get yourself set up on your back. You can either have your babies on your chest or they're gonna be seated 
on your hips. Yeah, that's it. And then you can support onto their either their pelvis, uh, either onto their hips and pelvis, or the ribs and armpits. Or if they're getting really good at sitting, you can hold onto their hands. And then from here, we're going to slowly lift the hips up, coming into bridge pose. And you can choose to hold the bridge to build strength and endurance, or you can lower down and lift up. Lower down and lift up. Just using this time to listen to what your body needs and also what your baby is enjoying. Sometimes the going up and then up and down is really fun for them. <laughs> and this is such a good pose, not only to build strength through our back and our pelvic muscles, but it's also really good to develop that trunk stability in our babies if they're seated. And we're going to hold for another three deep breaths. <laughs> and then slowly lowering the hips down. Now from here, I'll show you what you can do. You can either keep your baby on your chest and just bring your knees to the side to hug or you can also place your babies on your shins and hug your knees in nice and close so two options either baby on the chest knees to the side of the baby or have your baby on your shins and then just pull your knees in nice and close and yeah it's nice to rock side to side too this is always fun <laughs> Good. And from here, I find the safest and most fun way to come out from this position is to just let the knees come apart and the baby's going to fall onto your tummy. That's it. And then give your legs and your baby a big hug again. Yeah, now from here, we can keep our babies on our front. We're going to stretch our legs out. And we're going to come into um, a, a yin pose where we're going to stretch out the side body. So stay as you are, and I'll slowly talk you through it. We're going to use the right hand just to keep babies on our bodies, just to keep them safe and stable. Then walk your feet towards the right corner. And then lift your left arm up and arch your body towards the right. So I'll show you what it looks like standing up. So standing up, we're going to bring our feet to the side and arch the body this way. So you're creating a banana shape with your body. But keep the hips, keep the shoulders on the ground. So we're really just opening up the side outer line of the body. Good. And you can keep your babies on your chest or if they've rolled to the floor, just have them next to you on the inside of this banana. <laughs> and then just slowly bringing your feet back into neutral, slowly bringing that left hand back into neutral, and then taking your time, you're gonna set up on the other side. So again, just walking the feet first and then curving the upper body, opening out the side into this banana shape.
It's funny, sometimes we have this image in our mind of these restorative poses with our babies being so calm and restful, but it doesn't always happen that way. When I do it, you know, I'm getting kicked and punched and having things smashed in my face. <laughs> but some days we get lucky when we have a nice practice. Good. And from here, we're going to slowly bring our bodies back into neutral. So bringing the legs back in line with the spine, bringing the upper body back. And then we're going to settle into our final resting pose. So just finding whatever position works best for you for Shavasana. You can stay lying on your back with the legs long and the arms out by your side. Or you can also do what we did in prenatal yoga, lying on the left side and just having our babies in close to our bodies. So we're gonna take these last few moments to finish our class with a nice Shavasana, letting the whole body rest on the floor, letting as much of your spine, your legs, your arms as you can be supported by the ground beneath you. And then as you feel ready, just closing the eyes. And just consciously relaxing through your feet, your ankles, your knees, your hips, your back. As you breathe out, releasing any tension left over in the shoulders and across the face. And just finding stillness, finding silence. Start to deepen the breath. As you breathe, finding that connection with your baby's breath again. And just carefully wriggling the fingers and the toes. Start to bring a little more movement to the feet, the hands. And taking your time and in your own way, we will meet back in a seated position. Once we are here, we're going to sit nice and tall. We're going to interlace the fingers again, take a big stretch up, inhale. And then as we exhale, just taking a little twist towards the right side. Coming back to center, interlace the fingers, inhale, lengthen up. And exhale, twist towards the left.
coming back to center. We're gonna reach both arms out as wide as we can gathering up all the positive energy from this morning and then palms together, exhale down to heart center. Well done, lady.